Well, Virgo, Mercury has a starring role this week, and we are going to get all kinds into it. Virgo, this is your weekly tarot card reading and astrology overview for the week ahead. I'm going to shuffle some cards and keep getting these messages, but we're going to go over the astrology as well. This is for Virgo Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. For those of you who have never seen a video of mine before, my name is Michelle and this is Born Without Boundaries Tarot. Thank you so much for giving my videos a chance. If you really love this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you know when I upload all of your favorite content. The cards, the cards ain't easy right now, but they're exceptional. Um, what's going on with Mercury? So Mercury is in retrograde Virgo and it is conjunct the sun. And today we have a full moon in Cancer. And so the opposition is between a sun conjunct Mercury retrograde and a moon in Cancer. There's opposition here that's going to impact your ruling dignitary. And later on in the week, the moon will go into Virgo and form a beautiful trine. We'll see some harmony finally when we get that steadfast understanding of Virgo mentality. Um, and when the moon is in Virgo, it will no doubt be conjuncting your natal sun at one point or another over the about three days that the moon is in Virgo. So. This trine will happen when the moon is about midway through the sign of Virgo. So this will directly impact those of you that are born sort of mid Virgo season. This is a trine between the moon in Virgo, the sun in Capricorn and Uranus in Taurus. So this brings about dynamic change that is welcome, that is healthy an understanding and harmony between how who you are has to develop and change and reveal itself along the way and finding harmony with the changes that you've been through or gone through. So, and I welcome you to name for me the changes that you've been through and gone through um, throughout your life, especially in the past couple of years, especially over the past last year. Leave the comments below because these are the changes that are going to find some harmony now the full moon which is in opposition always to the sun but this time the sun is conjunct mercury your ruling dignitary is asking us where do we need to release and let go about all those emotions those sadness that pain that suffering because it's also that full moon and that sun conjunct mercury is square to chiron what has what what kind of pain do i am i able to let go with regards to my my home versus my career. Um, myself, my sense of self and who I wanted to be and who I am versus the family that I come from. So the open world, the wide world, the adult aspects of yourself versus those home aspects, the child aspects, the inner emotional self that always exists on some level and never goes away and always gives us roots. And it's interesting how we tend to water those roots by growing and expanding. And if we find ourselves not growing and expanding, those roots tend to rot. So it's the larger you allow your growth to be in your adulthood that actually nurtures the roots of your childhood as above, so below. And we're reminded of that now in our personal journey through life. And there's a lot of emotion that's being released right now. I wrote this down for you. Um, because this can there can be tension now between what you know and what you're certain of and what you realize, especially after you've been through so much in your past. And maybe a child that you have or somebody you're trying to raise, suddenly there's a quasi uncomfortable inversion of <laughs> the parent child roles. 
maybe with one of your parents or now seeing interactions with you and if you have children, how it might have felt to be on the other side. So all of these themes are gonna come up and be quite profound, you know, cause Mercury retrograde, even though it is conjunct the sun, it's still retrograde. So there's still a slowness to it, but there's a brilliance to the holding back and what is missed. There's all, almost a curiosity or a, a, tempt, a tempting aspect to what has been missed and what do I need to go over again and look at again, especially when it comes to what I'm capable of and who I'm capable of being. So this full moon will not be an easy one, but it will be a brilliant one. Let's get into the cards, Virgo. Job well done, good work. This is a sense of not just pride in yourself, but other people noticing and paying attention to what you've built or what you've created. Validation, as well as payment. You know, people seeking you out, looking for what you've done. And this is the conjunction with the sun. Really helping those aspects, those dynamics of your life in terms of your career, your job, your work, or like I said, something that you have created. But then we have reflection, taking time to reflect on people's appreciation of you, taking time to take it in and really embrace that, yes, I've done a good job. Or for some of you who might be going through a really emotional time, the message is simply, you have done exceptional work. What you have done upon reflection is absolutely extraordinary. And maybe it took somebody some time to notice that Virgo. And this would be the week that they're going to notice it or that you're going to notice it in them. Please take this as it resonates. This is your reading. So whatever energy I describe, take it where it resonates. There's always an extended reading as well. I'll attach that link down below and I will attach it above so you can just click on it and go right to it toward the end of the video. Ace of Swords, this is triumph and success over death. Or there's some tension or has been some tension between you and a Scorpio. And so now there's discussions that have to happen about now I appreciate you. Now I respect you. I see now that there was such an abundance in what you have done, in what you created. Or finally being able to contend and come back from some loss, some great loss in your life and finally find a practical use for it, a way to start healing, even if it's been a long time this sense of resurrective, resurrection, triumph in the resurrection. You can never bring back what was lost. It can never be that again. But what is new and what can grow from it? And now it's like the dawning of what is growing from it. I feel a lot of healing here. I feel a, a tremendous sense of rejoicing in being able to reflect, maybe for some of you, for the first time in a long time, you're able to look back on a very painful time in your life or a loss that you suffered and smile. Not that it happened, but that you're still here and you don't see it. That could be the transference. You don't see it as tragic as you used to because suddenly there is beauty that is growing from it. You know, it's like visiting a graveyard and seeing that flowers have started to grow. I think even mushrooms have started to grow near Chernobyl. In the worst, the most horrible situations, beauty starts to come back, life finds a way. And now I think you're starting to realize there's something coming back online and there's finally appreciation. I think through this appreciation for your hard work or for somebody's hard work in your life, suddenly recognizing, realizing 
the success in the loss. Because you continue, we continue to thrive, we continue to grow. Moon, we've got to pull a moon card, Virgo. Believe in the impossible. You never thought this was possible. You're talking to somebody again. So it's all swords, it's all communications. You're talking to somebody that you never thought that you would talk to again, or they're talking to you, or you're hearing words out of their mouth that you never thought you would ever hear, not for a million years, but here it is, comes through, be bold and make the first move. This is gonna be your challenge. This is around the full moon. You never thought you'd feel this way. You never thought you'd wanna do it, but you're doing it. You are going to call them. You are going to make the decision to make the first move, to be bold and get after it. Or you never thought you'd come to this point where you could actually move forward. You absolutely can. I'm telling you the time frame that this is going to happen between the full moon. <laughs> this is the impossible. The impossible happens around the full moon. So that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? The full moon is January 6th. But it, it, it's in full effect Thursday before that Friday. So the 5th, 6th, and the 7th in full effect. But then we have a cardinal moon. And it is a cardinal moon, right? It is a Cancerian moon. It's saying, take the initiative. The moon will start to fade. The moon will become a, a waning crescent as it enters the sign of Virgo. And by the time it enters the sign of Virgo, you will have that peace. You will have that empowerment to be able to make the first move. So in terms of the timeline, this breakthrough emotionally, it comes through around the full moon. Toward the end of the week, wait a few more days, the moon then has to go through three days in Leo, almost three days, and then three days into Virgo. So this is midweek, mid to end of the week, that you will initiate and say things you never thought you'd say, but you do because there's a change. There's a change in the value system or how you're valuing somebody or how they're valuing you. That changes everything in your dynamic with each other. I want to pull an angel card for you guys. I never really pull angel cards during these readings, but I, I needed to hear. Okay, so here are the messages for you purification and detoxification. It's time to release physical and energetic toxins for your life. You're finally able to let this go. You're finally able to discard of those toxins without any feeling like you have an obligation to hold on and maintain those toxins because, oh no, you're finally, you're finally free. And then we have self-confidence through God confidence. Believe in yourself by believing in God working through you. And God is pulsing through your veins. You're going to feel it come back online maybe for the first time in a long time. But it's, it's like in the beginning, you're going to be on shaky legs. It's not going to feel real or realize. You're not going to feel powerful. And it's not about feeling powerful. It's about letting yourself be, be vulnerable and realizing that that's okay. So it's like letting God work through you. This is very healing energy. Let's get into the details. What is the death card here for? What is the death card here for? It seems like you saw this coming from a mile away, that it was slow, but somebody wouldn't give up. You would you continue to persist. The King of Wands is a very arrogant energy. Um, perhaps even a person in your life, um, fire sign, maybe somebody with a lot of confidence, but this is cockiness. The king of wands in reverse is lack of creativity, feeling stuck, feeling like you can't move forward, uh, feeling like you don't have control over your own life and you've lost passion. Things have become very blah, very boring, a sense of stagnation. So it, it even is, I'll say this, in terms of sexuality, a loss of virility or a loss of, like, sexual mojo, right? It could be that as well. The clarification for the death card, I didn't see this happen with a family. So this is cancer, cancer energy, right? 
seeing it in the distance or somebody that had moved far away. Knight of Pentacles is a slow and steady progress and Seven of Wands, but they've come back up again. It's almost like a sense of, and the tower breaks. All of a sudden this tower moment happens. Something that, you know, it's almost like I've seen it coming. I saw this coming from a mile away. Let's clarify the tower, shall we? Because I think sometimes that can be a very disturbing energy. It's lovers. So it's not a bad thing that happens. It's just a shocking thing that happens. <laughs> it's a shocking thing that happens. But in some ways, you kind of knew. This could also be a love affair that causes a great sense of destruction that you could have kind of seen from a mile away you knew you knew because somebody had lost their virility somebody had lost their passion for something and so they moved on you know they saw potential somewhere else it could have even been for work slow and steady wins the race this took a long time to build up because you have the knight of pentacles maybe it's slow, slow moving energy. This could even represent you, this sense of it took me a long time to get to this point, but now I'm here, now I'm ready. Seven of Wands means some sort of passion has come back so that you fight, so that you stand up for what you believe in, or so that you move to talk or say something. And then we have the tower here. This will come as a shock, especially to whoever's on the other end of it. But there's love here, there's connection, there's some sort of shocking communication that comes through and then we have Queen of Wands. In some ways you've gone from the King of Wands in reverse to the Queen of Wands upright, which means it's not about power and virility now, now it's just about credit where credit's due and appreciating someone and having passion and sharing that passion and glowing glowing from it that's an interesting progress and procession all that comes from the death card so maybe it was a relationship not a person but a relationship that had passed away and there's a sense of i miss them i miss them and since mercury is in retrograde and you are ruled by mercury but the Mercury is going to, retrograde is going to be conjunct with that sun. There's going to be a lot of emotions when that moon hits. This is a sense of, I can't help it. I need to reach out because I care, because I want to connect. How is this going to go for Virgo? How is this going to go? <laughs> Oh, guys, this is actually really lovely. This is a game changer. I don't think you would. Oh, shit. Listen, I didn't think, I don't think that I like, this is not something I would put a bet on, right? But look at the two cards that came out. Six of Pentacles and Six of Wands. First of all, Six, Six is the lovers. We do have Six, Six, Six with all of those together, which means there could have been excess here material excess thinking too much about the the material world excessively and that is greed and it weighs you down and it fucks things up right but i didn't see that initially what i really saw was just six and six it's almost like in some ways maybe somebody overstepped their bounds or over overcharged or over spent or or um like Ex exceeded their bank bankroll right that very much could have happened just because they wanted something really really a lot but look where it ends up it ends up in value it ends up actually working out for them right which is good i said where is it going to end up for you you have lots of opportunities coming in you have lots of work you have lots of money from those opportunities coming in and public recognition, value, people valuing you. That's where it's ending up. Value, recognition, success, abundance on your own terms, not on somebody else's. This is really beautiful energy cascading down. Now, 
six six not six 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 but six six is love it's divine companionship it's two entities appreciating and valuing each other there is a six of pentacles here and there's a six of wands we had trouble with wands here we don't seem to have trouble with wands anymore passion is back somebody has bought passion back into your life there's love here again because you dared to give it a chance and reach out and talk to somebody i don't know what your relationship this is we're going to get deeper we're going to get more specific let's go to the extended click on the link above i will see you guys there